So Acro is a very innovative brand made by a master perfumer. That perfumer happens to be Olivier Cresp. He's actually responsible for the original Angel by Thierry Mugler. Here we have the brand new release, just came out in 2022. This one is inspired by the feeling of getting your first tattoo. This one is called Ink. I'm excited to share my thoughts with you on this brand new fragrance, so make sure to stay tuned. Now before I begin my fragrance review of Ink by Acro, and I tell you all about this fragrance, the smell, the performance, the versatility, comparison, so on and so forth, I do wanna start things off by mentioning that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Make sure to hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I do upload future videos to this channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you take something of value from today's episode. Now, there is another fragrance from this brand that I absolutely love, and it's called Awake. It's a coffee-based fragrance, and it's one of the most realistic coffee scents you can ever try. Olivier Cresp is a very down-to-earth perfumer. He has made so many beautiful fragrances, including Light Blue for Women by Dolce & Gabbana, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm remembering that correctly, Noah by Cacharel, and of course, uh, you know, Angel by Thierry Mugler. Here we have Ink by Acro, and this is a, well, I thought it was a leather-based fragrance. There's actually no leather in the note breakdown. There's an ink accord. There's birch, which kind of gives into that smoky sensation that you'll get from it. There's vetiver, which also kind of contributes to that darkness. As I'm sure you know, a lot of varieties of vetiver can be a little bit on the darker side of things. But then there's also a lighter element in here, which is the note of jasmine. So it seems like a contrast of ingredients is gonna be found in this fragrance, but I definitely have made a few comparisons. I'm excited to to try to break down the smell for you in a little bit more detail. Let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation. Right in the opening of this fragrance, I got something that, to me, I guess, kind of reminded me of like a leather accord. Now, when it comes to leather-based fragrances, some of them can be really animalic. Some of them can be a little bit on the smoother side of things, especially if it's like a suede leather accord. And some of them can just be a little spicy because, you know, a lot of spices, especially saffron, is used in the synthesis of a leather accord. Now, perhaps I'm getting a little bit of that in here here. There is a dark tonality about it, which I really, really like. And I can see where that ink accord is starting to come into play. Now, there is no leather in this fragrance, right? It's not listed anywhere in the note breakdown. But the reason why I mentioned it is because it actually reminds me of two other leather-based fragrances, and that is Bulgari Black and Creme de Cuir by BDK Parfum. Both of those fragrances have a leather accord in them and it has this dark yet kind of like gothic but also like very mysterious yet also like sophisticated personality about them. And this fragrance possesses a little bit of that darkness but it still does things in its own way. And I'm certainly picking up on the vetiver in here and it is definitely the darker variety of vetivers. Like if you think of something kind of on the bright and polished side of things, you might think of like a Roja Parfum vetiver or a gray vetiver by Tom Ford. So this is not on the clean side of things, if you will. This is definitely on the darker, more brooding, slightly gothic and definitely mysterious side of things, which is really, really cool. Now, does this fragrance smell like ink? Yes, I think it does. And of course, there is another fragrance that was said to smell like ink, and it's by Lalique. It's called Ancre Noir. Um, and so, you know, that fragrance also contains a lot of vetiver. And this fragrance, smells quite different from that. And so you are gonna get two um, completely different, well, not completely different, but you are going to get two different smells um, with the same concept in mind, but executed differently, which I think is really, really cool. Now, in the case of this fragrance, yes, I can definitely see where that ink accord is coming into play. And I think this fragrance possesses a really interesting personality, which I'm personally and quite truthfully really enjoying. So basically what you're gonna get 
again, in terms of the evolution is it's going to open up with that spicy, leathery, inky kick in the opening. And I suppose there's a little bit of jasmine in there just to sort of break apart the fragrance. It's not an indolic jasmine, so it doesn't smell animalic. It's on the cleaner side of things. But I think the jasmine is being drowned out by the vetiver, which kind of plays like a secondary role to that ink accord. Now, in terms of the birch, it's not overdone, right? There are times when in certain fragrances, a drop of birch is gonna add a whole lot of smoke to the fragrance. There isn't a lot of smoke in this. It's in there and you can perceive that it's in there, but it's not going to dominate uh, the composition in any significant way. So basically you are going to get a majority of, you know, this ink accord. You're also going to get the vetiver, which is on the darker side of things, but it doesn't smell soily. It doesn't smell like earth. It doesn't smell dirty in any way. So it's a very well pieced together, very well done composition by a super accomplished perfumer. And I guess if you're a fan of, tattoos or the smell of ink. If you're looking for something with a darker, more mysterious personality, I think you'll really enjoy Ink by Acro. Now, I did make some other comparisons to some designer fragrances. I would say, however, that this one, uh, appears to be of much higher quality. And so I'm really enjoying the complexity that's in here. And of course, there's always a lot more than meets the eye in terms of the ingredients used in the fragrance, which are not necessarily always revealed in the note breakdown. 99% of the time, they're not going to list every single ingredient that goes into the creation of a fragrance. But I love the complexity of the fragrance. And I definitely enjoy uh, the execution of that accord, which is kind of used or it's kind of done in all of Acro's fragrances. There's one that smells like weed, there's one that smells like coffee, and they all have a name to sort of accompany the concept. And so I think this is really, really cool. Hats off to the perfumer and the brand for releasing something that's really cool, unique, and innovative, and something that's also quite wearable. You know, I think in the case of a lot of other ink or leather based fragrances, you're going to get something that is not super accessible. Um, but this one is very polished, very smooth, definitely has that dark tonality and is a little mysterious. But I also think that the wearability and the versatility is not really compromised. So that's awesome. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I was able to make a few other comparisons, but those are just to be used as very loose frames of reference in terms of, for the most part, being able to identify what it smells like without actually smelling it. But of course, nothing is going to recreate the sensation of actually smelling it. So if you do have the means or the wherewithal to get a sample of this one, I would definitely recommend it. That's the best thing to do. Um, and in terms of the overall smell, I think it's very unique, a little quirky, but definitely mysterious. And I, I'm personally enjoying it. It's definitely my style of fragrance. Longevity on this one, you can expect about eight hours on your skin. The projection for this one was great for the first hour of application. It didn't even start to sit closer to the skin until about that five to six hour mark. Versatility on this one is great. I don't think it's too dark that you can't wear it in the hotter weather. Although I can see some people arguing that they probably wouldn't wear it right smack dab in the middle of summer when it's really, really hot outside. And I can sympathize with that. So I would probably say every season except for the summer, if you live in a really, really hot climate and it's just summer all year long, of course, if you wear it indoors, you can totally get away with it. I think this one is perfect uh, for both sexes, men, women. It's totally unisex in my opinion. I think in terms of age range, it'll appeal to somebody who's a little bit older, uh, somebody who probably probably has a little bit more experience in the fragrance game as it were. And I think this one is great for a dressed up scenario, but their fragrances are priced pretty affordably as well. So I can see somebody enjoying this one on a casual basis too. In terms of the presentation, I think it's really cool. The name is cool. The graphic on the sleeve here is cool. My final verdict on this fragrance is I love how this brand has various concepts that they're aiming to execute. And it seems like the delivery is always polished, always on point. And I think Ink is another great fragrance to add to the repertoire. If you have a chance to try it, definitely make sure you do so. I think you'll enjoy it. So. There you have it, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for joining me today. That was my fragrance review of the brand new Ink by Acro. 
If you own or have tried this fragrance, let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to support the channel by subscribing to it, hitting the bell icon, and giving it a thumbs up if you took something of value from today's episode, which I hope you did. Thanks again for watching. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.